Samantha, welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, I am a flight attendant and I also have this van. So today we're gonna do a van tour video. I've done one before on my channel, but it was right after I finished building it, so I wasn't yet living in it or traveling in it. I didn't have it fully stocked. So I wanted to do sort of an updated van tour or like a lived in van tour situation. So this van is a 1999 Chevy Express 1500 Regency. So it's a just a standard passenger van. I bought this van for $3,000 off of Facebook Market and I completely gutted it and rebuilt it all by myself with a little bit of assistance with the electricity and the woodworking. Other than that, it is completely self-built. The first place we're gonna start is just in the front of the van. So everything you're gonna see is how the van would be placed when I'm parked. When I'm driving, kind of everything is just in the back in places where it's not gonna move around while I'm driving. But when I'm parked, I do end up stacking everything in the front. As I mentioned before, I am a flight attendant, so I do have luggage. I have my work suitcase and my tote bag, and I also have a gym bag that contains all of my shower stuff. So I have a Planet Fitness membership and that's where I go to do all my showering and everything. So I keep those three things out all the time because I don't really have anywhere to put them. So this is what it looks like. It's just stacked differently every time. Like sometimes the suitcase is on the bottom. Right now the gym bag is on the bottom. I literally just stack it so that it is out of the way. I made these window coverings that can cover up all the windows. I did one side black and then one side reflective to keep the sun out. So they're kind of reversible, if you will. Um, and that also hides people from being able to see what is in my front seat. So I'm totally comfortable having these up here while I'm sleeping or whatever I'm doing as long as I have those window coverings on. This is my bag that contains all of my like camera equipment, cords, charging cords, like all that stuff. I just keep it in this bag because it's super easy to find it. If it's something electronic, I know it's gonna be in here. And I just always keep it hanging on my passenger seat. There's not often somebody riding in my passenger seat, so it doesn't bother anybody. And then also in the back, I keep my broom, which used to be full size, but my grandpa altered it for me, so it was van size. <laughs> got an ice scraper, we've got bug spray, uh, spray adhesive in case I ever need it, and my big tripod because there is nowhere else that will fit. Okay, so right behind my driver's seat, I keep this um, laundry bag, and it just hangs off of the back, super easy. It's empty because I just did laundry today, but normally it just gets full of clothes. If you're tall and have super long legs, that might not be realistic because your driver's seat is gonna be back further, but I'm pretty short and I have to have it up almost completely all the way. So it works for me. I also have my diesel gas tank right here. It's attached to the kitchenette. Is that what this is called? <laughs> it's attached to the kitchenette and um, the fuel pump and everything runs underneath the van to my diesel heater, which is underneath the passenger seat. So right here, underneath the passenger seat is where we put the diesel heater. So if you can see, it just pops out right behind this thing. And here are the wires. The wires are wired underneath this thing right here. We secured a few inches higher than it's supposed to be so that the wires would not be squished. If I don't want to use the window coverings, which oftentimes I do not, I put this blackout black curtains. I just got them at Walmart. There's two panels and I cut them and hemmed them the length of the van. And this is just a super cheap, also from Walmart, it was like $3, a curtain hanger, which my cat that I was traveling with for a little bit has distorted, but it actually kind of works perfect. It secures it from letting any light out at the top. So I can just close these and I have Velcro on each side so it'll black it out all the way around. These cabinets we gutted from the original van. As you can see, everything, I gutted everything down to the metal. 
I don't necessarily recommend that, but that is what we did. So I even gutted these overhead storage spaces and we had to rebuild the entire box with the face and everything and the door. So there is a little bit of space up above on the door, but it's never bothered me and no one's ever commented on it in any video or in real life. So I think it turned out pretty good. But up here, I just keep all my kitchen stuff. So there's cans of food in there, my coffee maker, plates, bowls, spices, literally anything I can fit in there that's kitchen related, I put in there. This is my dual carbon monoxide and smoke detector. However, word of advice, do not place it near your cooking area because it goes off almost instantaneously, but it does come off very easily so I just put it like on the floor of the what would you what is the front called cab yeah so I literally just put it right underneath the in front of the driver's seat in the cab and then I don't have a problem when I built the camper van the thing that I needed the absolute most was a tiled countertop for whatever reason. I blame Hannah Lee Duggan because I fell in love with her van, Walter, and she did a tiled countertop and then I thought I needed a tiled countertop. But I actually still really love it. I don't find anything wrong with it. It does like kind of get stained and it's not as easy to clean as a smooth flat countertop. This is the sink that I got. I got the sink also on Facebook Market for like $20 and it was kind of cool because the woman who sold it to me had bought it for a camper van that they never actually finished. So I feel like it did get to live. It's camper van, camper van dreams. I wanted a deep sink because I knew if I ever needed to wash my hair that I needed my whole head to fit. And that is one thing I absolutely do not regret um, getting I've never actually washed my hair in it, but it is great for hiding things and storing things Now I wanted this to be a lived-in van tour, so I didn't actually do my dishes So you can kind of tell how much I have a pan and my water kettle. I have some dishes I have the drying rack literally everything just sitting in there This is the faucet I got just from Home Depot. It's actually like a filtered water faucet, so it's pretty small um Two reasons I wouldn't recommend getting it is it was really hard to fit the plumbing fixtures. It was really hard to fit the plumbing fixtures to that size faucet um, from the water pump. But also, I just never even use it, which brings me to my next point. I've been using these gravity water systems. I find them so much more convenient and easier and less of a headache than the water pump has ever been. So I don't even use my water pump anymore. I seriously just use this gravity water jug. So this is kind of where we get into the nitty gritty. So storage is a little bit limited in a camper van and I, not ever having lived in or traveled in a van, kind of didn't really know what I was doing. I watched as many videos as I could, but definitely I've learned a lot and I'm definitely gonna be changing some things as well. But right now, this is what it looks like. So if you can see, way in the back here, we have a fresh water tank, and right next to it, we have a gray water tank, which has a plastic bag over it at the moment, just to keep it from like smelling or anything like that. I have a friend staying with me right now who's actually filming, and I didn't want the van to creep her out. So I put the plastic bag over it. Anyway, so everything that's in storage is just kind of like shoved in here. There's no rhyme or reason. Now that I've been using the gravity water system, I'm most likely gonna be getting rid of the fresh water tank and just putting a shelf in there and having more storage. This is my 12 volt refrigerator or um, electric cooler, I think is what it's technically called. It is a Dometic. I'm not sure what model it is, um, but yeah, it works pretty well. This is my junk cupboard. Well, they're all kind of junk cupboards, I guess, but you can see it's all just shoved in there. So many propane bottles because I had some in there I forgot about and then I bought some more. I've got my camping stove. It's a Coleman two burner stove. Um, I've got a ring light in there. I've got a bag of makeup I haven't looked at in six months in there. I've got hats in there. Just literally anything that I have nowhere else to put, but I think I'm gonna need 
I put in there so I can get it real quick. So these two drawers are pretty much just filled with everything. This one's sort of, sort of kitchen. It was supposed to be like my utensil drawer, but there's a bunch of bags of tea, some cha. It's mostly kitchen stuff, I guess, plus tea and some wine stoppers and some duct tape. <laughs> And this other one is anything I need shoved in a drawer. Some more makeup. We've got masks on masks in here. Christmas lights. Old cell phone case. Old camera that's broken and probably needs to go in the trash. Sunglasses. Another junk drawer. I don't know if a junk drawer is something all around the country. I'm from Minnesota and I've heard it's only a Midwestern thing to say. My friend who's from California is saying no. So you guys should let me know in the comments if you have a junk drawer wherever you're from. Normally these two doors stay closed, especially this door because I keep stuff in the um, step well area. It's good for things not flying around while you're driving. Anything that is flying around is gonna end up in that area at some point anyways. And because my fan has been having mechanical issues, I am currently traveling with a ladder that doesn't fit anywhere except right there so I haven't been able to use that door um I keep some backup oil here for my engine because my engine is currently burning some oil as far as I can tell it's not leaking it's just burning very slowly so we just keep some backups in this sort of um in this mini trash can I keep my middle of the night bathroom which is a empty gallon jug and a funnel and that is all I use. And I keep it in here so that nobody sees it. A lot of people think that this happily ever after sign is a door to something and it is not. It's literally just decoration. I thought it was cute because I'm a princess and it's my happily ever after. And so there's just two screws. Does it fly off a lot while I'm driving? Yes, all the time. Don't recommend the screws. <laughs> it does not hold very well. Um, I cut this thing out of a piece of plywood, like an extra piece of plywood that I had lying around. I used the same stain, looks a little different, but um, but it was very easy. And then these are my clothing drawers that I have. Is that the right way to say it? Drawers. Um, so they're pretty long. I'll try to pull out this one so you can see. I don't want to pull it all, all, all the way, but they're both the same length, so they're both pretty big, so I can fit quite a lot of clothes in here. This is a second drawer, and it is the same exact size, but I just wanted to show so nobody makes the same mistake that I did, because I didn't know that the handles on your cupboards are actually supposed to go in the top corner, because I've never made them before or decorated them, so I put them in the middle, but now the drawer gets stuck a lot on there. Sometimes I pull it past it and that handle's not going to last very long, but I think they're from the Goodwill, so it's okay. I can get new ones. Up here, we have our beautiful shelves that we made. I originally intended for them to be cabinets because I see cabinets in almost every van build. Again, this is something that I maybe would have left the original um... I would have let the original build and just painted them, but I got a little gut happy and gutted them and then had to build something on them. And the cabinets were a little too complicated for me because the ceiling is not flat. So I decided to do a shelf. It was actually my mom's idea to get these railings for the shelf. They're just from Home Depot. They were the only ones Home Depot had and I painted them white to match the shelf. And then I had to find baskets to fit up here, and that was a hard task. But I found these baskets, they're plastic. They have this kind of like leaf design on them, and they're from Aldi's. And they ended up being the perfect size because they're not normal size baskets. They're skinnier, um, like a weird five inches or something, and a lot of baskets are six inches and get wider at the top. So it was the luckiest thing ever finding these baskets. So we got enough. So they just hold kind of all of my random knickknacks. I have my cellular water. I have razors. I have pain meds. I have 
uh, oatmeal, spices, hair brushes, crocheting stuff, journals. Yeah, so all that we have here, we've got some twinkle lights that I just used hooks. Um, really easy. I hand twisted them in. Fake plant over here. Looks very classy. Uh, my princess sign that I had in my room at home from when I was like basically a child, but I never grew out of it. And this is a little spice basket that I got at the thrift store. It's just screwed on there. It's been falling off lately though, so there's probably a better way um, to attach it, but it's super easy. We've got from Walmart when they had their college stuff, a pink paper towel holder. And then up here we have white rubber hooks. They're bigger and I just did them I think exactly a foot apart but basically these were my original mugs and I just would take the two mugs and make sure they were far enough apart that they didn't swing together which when I'm driving they almost always are swinging and these are my new coffee mugs I'm trying to get all four of them but so far I only have two old country roses Royal Albert my favorite pattern this is another cabinet that we had to completely remake. It's a totally different shape than the front one. So it took us a whole day to make the front one. And I think it took us another day to make the back, but maybe we made them in one day. But it was a very long day. I was exhausted. But this one just has clothes. It's a little smaller. So it's a lot of like my big sweaters, some dresses, like bulky, bulkier items. I still have not packed away my winter clothes. So that's why those are all up there. I have a TV back here. This is the original TV that came with the van. And a lot of people ask me what the brand is. It's Naxa N A X. Yeah. It's N A X A. And the TV already was 12 volt, but when we took it out, it was attached to an inverter, so they were using it as 110. So all I did was go online and order a 12 volt plug that I could use for it. So it takes very, very little electricity to run. I don't know how many, I think it's like two amps, like something really low. So we just used a little swivel mount to put that on there. I don't want to squish my hands. And then I have an electrical 12 volt outlet that I wired right here because I knew that's where I wanted my TV to go. And I know people are going to ask this as well because I get asked this all the time when people see my TV is how do I watch the TV? The truth is right now I'm not watching it almost ever. I'm usually by myself and so I just watch things on my phone. But when I'm near Wi-Fi or if I have somebody else, I wanted to be able to use it. So I just have this Amazon Fire Stick and it looks a little aggressive right now because the TV, the HDMI cord didn't fit the full Amazon Stick so I had to buy an adapter and I just power it off of my cell phone hotspot. So for me, it works if I have service, but if you're somewhere remote where you don't have service, you could do an HDMI direct from your cell phone and plug that into the TV and you can watch movies that way. My bed is a full size bed. I just got a standard foam mattress, so I had to cut inches off on both sides to fit within the walls and it does, the bed gets skinnier as you go back because that's the shape the walls are. So usually when I sleep, I have to sleep diagonal, something of this nature, but I do almost fit over here wall to wall. So if you can picture, I am 5'4", maybe 5'4 and a half, depending on who's measuring me, but your feet like can't relax so I usually sleep diagonal across the whole thing so this thing never really gets in my way because it's just in the corner the corner that I'm never in one of the most interesting and important parts of the van build is the electrical setup as I mentioned I wired the entire thing by myself with some help um, I did have different people kind of consulting me on how to do it I do have a different video where I talk exclusively about all my electrical stuff and that is all located underneath my bed. I used to have something attached to this that would hold this up, but the whole thing was just too heavy and broke it off. So now I just hold it up. Now that I'm done building it, it's not, I hardly ever have to go underneath here. This is where all of my electrical stuff is. I have a 
Sterling Power battery to battery charger. This one is the um, the 30 model. There's like a 30 and a 60 model. I have two 100 amp hour AGM batteries. I have a 1000 watt inverter. I have two circuits down there that power all of my lights, my fan, my heater, and all of that stuff, all my electrical outlets that I have. And I do have a kill switch that kills the power from the front battery to the back battery. Here you can see the puny thing that I was trying to have hold this entire thing up. This side is just completely full of random storage, so there is also a lot of bulky sweaters and stuff that I need to get rid of. My winter coat is in there now that winter's over. There's like a camping shower in there. There's a second camping stove in there. There's shoes in there. Just like random stuff that I don't need to get up very often. It's kind of the emergency items or the keep it like extra blankets. I have a 12 volt heated blanket somewhere in there. And the very last part I have to show you of the van is my garage. Okay, on this back door, I have this random basket, which still has the tag on it. I think I got it at Marshall's, um, that I have this book in, and I just thought when I'm laying in bed, I can keep stuff in here. I really don't ever use it, but it's there if I need it. This is all I did to cover up my back garage. It's just a piece of plywood, and then I put the same cedar planks that I used on the whole rest of the van to cover that up, and it's just on your standard hinges. I don't know what kind of hinges they are, but they're just your average hinges. And this is all I use to keep it closed. So it locks it shut. But it also never really flies open while I'm driving, obviously, because the doors are there. But there's a nice gap in between the edge of my bed and where this ends and the doors. So if it rains, sometimes this door does leak, but it literally just goes right outside the van. It doesn't ever get on anything that's inside the van so it works out pretty nicely. I keep everything in this garage from tools to laundry stuff to a snow shovel. I have candles that I also bought for an Instagram photo that I'm just like keeping back there. I still haven't used them. I have antifreeze. We've got pillow, butt cushion for driving long hours. More Reflectix. We have twine, garbage bags. This is where I keep all the things that I need to get to often enough that I don't want them in the extra space. And when I'm fixing things, which happens so much more than I ever thought it would in the van, I can have super easy access to it all here. I have a portable jump starter for the van because if you've seen any of my other videos, then you know I was having major problems with the van not starting for a long time. So this thing, I got so much money's worth out of that. This tub is literally just full of wires, extension cords, and tools. Yeah, more tools. That's pretty much all that is back here. And that is all I have to show you guys today for my lived-in van tour video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, if I missed anything, if I completely forgot to talk about something important, please ask below. I do have a lot of videos describing various aspects of the van build, so be sure to check those out if you have any questions. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video.